Well, our government deficit is just approaching $21 trillion, $20.86 trillion to be exact. It's gone up $1.23 trillion in just the last year, partially thanks to tax cuts from Trump on top of all the stimulus from the government. Now, the whole supply side notion is, hey, you stimulate the economy, you lower taxes, QE, whatever, but in this case, they're more into lowering taxes. Um, it, it's made up for by growth. Um, that would be nice if it were the case. Uh, that was the whole thing back. Larry Kudlow and um, um, Art Laffer and Stephen Moore, the, the, the classic supply side people, um, Kudlow and all in the Reagan administration. They cut taxes back then, and even though Trump says this is the biggest tax cut ever, it's not. Reagan's tax cut was bigger as a percentage of GDP, uh, substantially larger, and GDP was growing 3.6% during his term um, from 81 through 88, and guess what? The federal debt tripled from $930 billion to $2.8 trillion during that eight-year period in a boom. The growing economy, 3.6% real GDP growth, adjusted for inflation, is about as high as it gets and was as high as the entire average from 1955 to uh, uh, 1980, uh, before Reagan. That did not erase the deficits. And again, in boom times, you're supposed to run surpluses so you can run natural deficits with lower tax revenues and higher social costs in recessions and downturns like the early 80s or like the early 90s or early 2000s and, of course, 2008 to 9. So, so this is just typical um, more excuses for endless stimulus. What Democrats and Republicans both want uh, by different means is endless stimulus. They always want to make the economy look better today so they get reelected and then let the consequences come later. And, and, and the entire Federal Reserve and, and pump priming started in 1913 to try to temper the ups and downs in the economy and did do that for long enough to allow the economy to get leveraged up into the greatest boom in history back then and the greatest debt, debt bubble in history back then and then crash into the greatest depression ever. This crap doesn't work, period. It, again, is just an excuse to stimulate more, make people feel better today, whether it's quantitative easing. Now that's another four trillion, by the way out of thin air printed. To me, that's the same thing as borrowing money. We've been living on endless trade deficits and not just because of, of Chinese cheating, although that's part of it, because we like to consume more than we produce. That makes us feel better also. And of course, this 21 trillion and going uh, government debt. Now, what's the forecast? Well, first of all, Reagan tripled the government debt in eight years. Under Bush, George W., it tripled from five to 10 in eight years. Under Barama, 10 to 20 in eight years, doubling again. I'm sorry, so triple under Reagan, double, double. I don't see why it wouldn't double in the eight years of this administration or whatever comes in the next eight years, because not only are we running, again, 1.2 trillion in the last year during a boom, imagine what occurs during a major crash in debt deleveraging. And we're gonna get that sooner or later. You, you just can't keep doing this forever. And, and, and again, our indicators suggest the greatest weakness in time for this is, is in the next two to, to five years. That, that's when the demographics and our other long-term indicators are the weakest and when, and when fundamental factors are likely to overwhelm this endless need for stimulus. And, and, and reminder, Trump's promising a second tax cut because this wasn't enough. So that's the truth. Um, this does matter. Uh, it does crowd out investment. That's one of the reasons 1987 uh, saw a crash and, and Greenspan had the beginning of, of an endless stimulus program by the Fed, always lowering interest rates, always buying bonds, whatever form, to stimulate the economy. We never let the economy deleverage, consolidate, 
flush out waste, which is healthy, just like the common cold. We don't want that to happen because we don't want any damn pain. No pain, no gain. Ask Japan. Now, going on 30 years of a flat line economy with zero plus or minus growth, zero plus or minus inflation, they're on a morphine drip to hell and death because they're not willing to deleverage debt. They're not willing to let banks and businesses fail. They're not willing to let unemployment go up for a period like Iceland did in the recent 2008 and all crisis. They, in the Euro crisis to follow the our 2008 crisis, they devalued their currency. They defaulted on all foreign debts. They tolerated years of 20% inflation and came out stronger after some pain. Deleveraging is painful. Life is painful, period. No pain, no gain. We're in sometime in the next one to five years for the worst deleveraging in history. And at best, we just go into an endless flat line, morphine drip, death spiral like Japan. And they've been doing this something for nothing, endless stimulus, never allowed deleveraging the longest and they are going nowhere, and they're in a positive demographic cycle from 2003 to 2020. Positive. Wait till it goes negative again, again, 2021 forward. This stimulus game is being promoted by governments. Doesn't matter whether it's QE or tax cuts, it all goes to the top 1%, 10% at best, 0.1% to the extreme, doesn't help the everyday worker, except it prevents a major downturn in unemployment, which would only last a couple years, like, you know, 1930 to 33 anyway, and doesn't allow us to deleverage. So we never regenerate, we never get to grow and be healthy again. And even if we do so, the future trends will not be as strong because our demographic and productivity trends are simply not as strong and predictable to not be as strong in an aging economy. So we're adding insult to injury with our inability to accept that we need to balance the economy and allow natural forces to rebalance just like our body knows how to do if you get rest and, 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 and allow the body to deleverage when it gets sick, stressed, or overbalanced. We're not doing this and we're going to pay a bigger price, either an even greater deleveraging than we've seen in our lifetimes, greater than 2008 and 9 and or the worst case, we're in a flat line economy for ne forever. And we don't ever come out of this winter season into spring as, Ch as Japan has now demonstrated over two and really broader definition, three decades of flatlining. So again, wake up, get ready to make big changes, get out of the way of this. There's nothing you or I or anybody can do about this. We are on this path towards we will not accept pain, and therefore we will get more. That's the way the world actually works.